In this video, we're going to talk about boxes, side panniers, saddle bags, top boxes, whatever you want to call it, basically extra ways of putting luggage onto your motorbike. And one of the most important things about driving a motorbike and to have the best performance possible is to reduce your weight. So if you can get away with reducing your luggage and not using boxes in the first place, then that's what you should do. And what we have here is your standard adventure motorbike setup. We've got aluminium side boxes on a Honda CB500X. To get a setup like this, you need to buy a rack that is usually specific to your model of motorbike. In Vietnam, Jivy sells them. These are also Jivy aluminium trekker boxes. Again, you can get them here. The total setup is going to cost over $1,000, um, but you can do it. And it's one of the best ways of adding luggage space to your motorbike. Now these are great because they're waterproof, they're lockable, at the end of a hard day you just unclip it from the motorbike, take them into your hotel. If you're camping you can use this as a seat, so there's a lot of extra benefits to one of these. In terms of crashing, these boxes do cave in, we've even had them sort of snap, we can weld them back together. So in Vietnam maintaining boxes like this is actually very easy. In other countries overseas, maybe they get to a point of being called a write-off, but here super easy to maintain. And one of the big risk factors with having big side boxes is to make sure they're not wider than your handlebars. This is really important for navigating traffic and is an element that people often forget about. If the boxes are wider than your handlebars, this is not safe. So when you're looking at side boxes versus a top box, in my personal opinion, you should always go with the side box because you've got a lower center of gravity, you haven't got all the mass up high, in terms of the big adventure bikes, it's the same rack system for the top box and the side boxes. In other words, the bulk of the weight is in the rack anyway. So if by the time you have all of that, you might as well do the side box. So in Vietnam, everything has to be cheap. Everything's cheap here. So we have plastic boxes. We no longer need to spend $800, $1,000 on fancy aluminium boxes. We can get this plastic box set up for less than 200 bucks. And it works. The downside to these is the locking system often breaks, the locks actually fall out, and also if you crash the box just shatters into a thousand pieces. Once that happens it's game over, you now need to buy another box. Overall, when you're looking at small bikes, these will go on winners, exciters, even things like air blades and blades. And the rack system that Jivy has, although it works, is incredibly heavy for a little motorbike. So if you do go down this route, although the plastic boxes are light, the rack system is heavy and you're putting a lot of weight onto a small motorbike. If you care about performance, you'll feel the difference when you have the racks on it and that is worth keeping in mind. Now Jivy actually have the top box rack separate to the side box racks on these sort of small motorbikes. That's not normal when you're compared to looking at big adventure bikes overseas. So on a small motorbike, it may be worth getting the top box, which I'll explain with the Honda Airblade later. So here we have a Honda Airblade with a top box, and you can put top boxes on pretty much any motorbike in this country for around $60. It's incredibly cheap. And with these top boxes, the lock systems don't seem to break, although they are still really fiddly. And when it's on the top of your motorbike, you don't have to worry too much about crashing. So again, you're not gonna have a situation of them breaking into a thousand pieces. You also don't have the metal mount on the side that's for the side boxes, so you're saving a lot of weight in that area too. But you still have to keep in mind, this steel mounting system plus the mounting base plate for these boxes is incredibly heavy when considering a 110, 150cc scooter. And it doesn't really matter which motorbike you have. If you install one of these and you're driving along slowly, let go of the handlebars, you will feel the motorbike wobble. And that's been caused by the top box. And when we're renting out motorbikes, we often have complaints about motorbikes being wobbly, even up to the CB500Xs, and it's caused by top boxes being too heavy and basically changing the center of gravity for the motorbike. However, if you're in the city and you're going to work, you want extra helmet storage, you want to put your laptop in it, your books in it, then why not? It's great. But if you are doing an adventure journey where performance means something to you, then the top box perhaps, again, just puts the center of gravity too high up on the motorbike. So this is a dual sport or an off-road motorbike, whichever way you want to look at it. And basically they have plastic flaps at the back. You can't get any hard box, side box setup for these motorbikes. It just doesn't exist. And people are always looking for ways to put more luggage 
on their off-road motorbikes. Now in Vietnam, you can buy $50 side bags, but they're incredibly complicated to mount on your motorbike and they fall apart really quickly. There is no quick, cheap solution to adding luggage to an off-road motorbike. Basically, you have three choices in the world today. You have Krieger, which is what this is. You have Moscow Moto, not in Vietnam, and you have Wolfman, not in Vietnam. These are amazing. They start at about $350, but they work, and we have videos on them. They're reliable. They don't wobble around on the motorbike. It is the answer to your off-road dual sport setup. Don't try and do anything else. Just get the Krieger bags. So we also have the Krieger soft bags uh, for the big adventure motorbikes. But interestingly enough, when I was researching the weight between a hard box and a soft pannier by Krieger, because you need the mounting plates, the hard boxes came out around one kilogram more than the soft panniers. So that's interesting. So one of the advantages to the soft pannier is it doesn't stick out really wide. You also don't have to worry too much when you crash bending in that kind of thing Krieger products are built like tanks you can't break them so it's an interesting thing to consider if you really do want to save weight you should be going for the soft pannier setup although the weight saving gain is very little every little counts though